from what you mentioned with Daniel Harris giving you that referral, how important is it um, having strong networks and doing a good job, on, you know, at the lower levels and, and giving the, you know, appreciating those roles before you, I guess, you make it in the top? Yeah, well, I, I think it's um, a lot of people, including players when they arrive and, and um, young coaches and so on, are, are really in a rush. And I understand that because um, it's an exciting industry and we want to be the best we can be. And, and um, But it takes time. It, it really takes time. It's a, it's a learned craft. Um, I think being able to learn along the way, have people that will not only educate you, but pull you up when you need to be pulled up. And you're about to head coach a an under 18s program again um what would you do differently to you know 14 years ago um i think i think there's been a lot of work done now um by people like brene brown uh, i've been fortunate to work with a guy called peter fooder um in in victoria uh, in sydney um, even the thing work that um, ben crow's doing uh, i did a master class with him last night on online about understanding yourself um as I mentioned, I was all over the joint when I first started, but really understanding uh, what your purpose is, I think, um, what your values are, what you like at your best, what are the things that trigger you um, to not be at your best? How does that show up? Um, how can you be aware that you're in that state before you say something you might regret or do something that you may, um, again, regret or not be, not be comfortable with that you've done? So I think the work um, on understanding yourself, knowing um, knowing who you are, what makes you tick, what your motivations truly are. If I'd been able to, I mean, that's this sort of work. I wasn't uh, around, I suppose, really in the '90s when I started. For a 15-year-old male and female footballer, what's something that when you see a new draft pick come in um, that you get excited about when they're showing certain traits, whether it be physical or the mental side or attitude, whatever it might be, but like what are three things that you think, oh, I've, I've seen this before in a few players and it's a bit of a trend and they seem to seem to go well in the AFL system. Um, not to lose sight of the fundamentals of the game with ball in hand, um, being clean and with, with one touch. Um, makes a huge difference uh, at our level if you can take the ball cleanly. Um, and a lot of that is just repetition sort of work, um, different tricks and tools to um, whether it's rebound nets or taking things one handed or whatever it might be in a training setting, just to ensure that you are as clean as you can be. So when the ball, because of the whole thing speeds up, the higher the grade, the quicker the game. So um, yeah, that being able to be one touch player, uh, both at, at ground level and when the ball's in your in your area to, to mark it or, or to catch it, um, your kicking and your handball, the, the real basics of the game, not lose sight of that. Um, mm. I think probably my opinion from uh, your wheelhouse, mate, your space, is um, whilst the the strength and the physics and the conditioning stuff is super important, I also think the work done in the durability space and the mobility is really important. Um, yep. We have a lot of guys that can come in and even though they're young, they, they're starting to put muscle on, but they're tight as tight can be, you know, so they don't have the flexibility, they don't have the mobility through the hips. And favourite inspirational quote or life motto? Well, I've somehow got introduced, I don't even know how I did, to the, um, to the Stoics um, and Stoic philosophy. And I suppose there's two, mate, really. Um, the first one is we suffer more in our imagination than in reality. And the yeah. second one is um, objective judgment now at this very moment, unselfish action now at this very moment, and unwilling acceptance now at this very moment of the external things I can't control. So they are the two that sort of resonate with me a lot. They're the two I reflect on a lot in my journal because I can get in my own way quite easily and um, they're important for me with not only how I live my life here at West Coast but how I live my life at home. What were some important things for, for for the coaches to to help them communicate and, and teach their experiences to the players? Like what what did you what were your focus areas? Well, I guess um, probably one of the key ones was actually having our coaches uh, when they have meetings, starting with the end in mind. So when 
a group of guys get up and walk out of this meeting or walk away from this training drill or this exercise or whatever it might be, what is it that you want them to take away with them? So if I yeah. can be really clear on that before I start, so that's that's for any other teachers out there, you write up your lesson plans when you're learning how to teach and you set your objectives and you're really clear on what that is. Um, you know how you're going to teach them and then you know how you're going to assess them. So having guys um, be really clear on these are the two or three things I want them to leave with. These are the things that are going to keep me on track so I don't get sidetracked and give them piles and piles of information. Um, and then I can also check how they've, if they've understood or what their learnings are or how they've interpreted um, the message too in, in a number of different ways. And uh, that's important to do. 